some mathematicians have long ago proposed that the nucleus of a massive atom contains particles they call neutrons. The mathematicians illustrate these neutrons just like they do their protons as tiny bowling balls. They justify the sleight of hand on the basis that protons and neutrons weigh about the same. More precisely, a neutron weighs just about as much as a hydrogen atom, a proton bowling ball, and an electron golf ball put together. To distinguish these two bowling balls, the mathematicians place a little plus sign on the right of the proton and a zero on the neutron. The positive sign indicates that the proton is positively charged. The zero indicates that a neutron has no charge. It is this vague, unspecified, mysterious charge thingy that allegedly keeps the negatively charged electrons bound to the proton. Neutrons lack this mystical mediator of attraction. But until the quantum mathematician can tell you what this magical charge thingy is in physical terms, and how this charged entity or medium physically mediates the attraction between protons and electrons, we certainly cannot understand what it is that the neutron is lacking. What is physically different between a proton and a neutron? Why does one have charge and the other one doesn't if both are made of quarks which throw gluons at each other? Let's zoom in on one of the protons. It is composed of three quarks, two up quarks and one down quark, moving around very close to each other. The quarks are kept together by a number of gluons interacting with the quarks and also with the other gluons. The gluons give rise to the gluon field that keeps the constituents of the proton together. How does this proton architecture attract a negative electron? Does the electron have a hook-like shape that latches on to a ring-like proton? Or is it a rubber band that binds them? In other words, we need to answer how the properties and behaviors of protons and neutrons are related to their architectures. Thread theory proposes that light is mediated by an entity that resembles a twine two-strand rope. The rope forks out at the surface of the atom. One strand of the rope continues straight and forms the proton, an urchin-like star at the center of an atom. The other thread of this rope coils around and weaves the electron shell, a balloon that encapsulates the proton. This model enables us to visualize the phenomenon the mathematicians call charge. We can now understand why an electron is physically bound to a proton. An electron is not a bead that orbits the atom, as quantum would have you believe. The electron is a balloon weaved by countless threads that fork out at the surface of the electron shell. The electron can't leave the proton even if it wanted to because it is interwoven with and thus bound permanently to it. An atom expands and contracts. The so-called quantum jumping torques the rope. The torquing of the rope is what we call light. The radial release and reeling of all these links of rope is what the quantum mathematicians have always referred to as energy. When the atom expands and contracts, it also causes a tiny friction, the sliding and rolling of one strand along the other everywhere the ropes fork out, which occurs almost everywhere along the surface of the electron shell. The aggregate of this friction is what the quantum mathematicians call charge. Thus, an atom has charge at its surface and releases energy. Einstein's mystical equation finally has a physical interpretation. The rope torques in two directions, to and from every atom in the universe. This disturbance of the rope is what we detect as light, traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second. Thus, energy consists of links of rope released and reeled at the speed of light in two directions, to and from every atom in the universe. The quantum mathematicians, instead, still hold on to the Ptolemaic notion that this signal consists of one-way particles they call photons. 
What the astrologers of the religion of quantum mechanics cherish the most are predictions. So here's a prediction for them. The rope model of light and the atom predicts neutrons. If every rope in the universe converges upon an atom, these ropes must also crisscross in countless regions where they pass on their way to atoms. The rope hypothesis proposes that this intersection of ropes constitutes a neutron. Under the rope model of light, whereas a proton is a convergence of electric threads, a neutron is a convergence of electromagnetic ropes. An atom produces charge by rubbing or rolling the electric and magnetic threads where they fork out. The neutron lacks the architecture necessary to perform this function. Here we have drawn a red dashed line merely to show where the atom would end. Thus, although the weight of the neutron and the atom are about the same, they have different architectures. They're structured differently. One more time for those who didn't catch it the first time. The magnetic thread forks out and weaves the electric shell. The electric thread continues straight to the center of the atom. Quantum jumping produces a friction at this fork everywhere along the surface of the electron. The mathematicians refer to this buzzing all along the surface of the atom as charge. The neutron lacks the ability to generate this friction because it is comprised only of ropes heading towards atoms. Thus, unlike the atom, the neutron has no charge. Let's look now at how neutrons are incorporated into atoms. Mm -hmm.